Phillips. This is one of those connections that you gotta be super, super careful to make sure that you got it right. Hey, welcome back to Helium Street. And today we're gonna do kind of like a laser focused uh, topic. We're gonna talk about waterproofing our connections. Um, it's now the wet season. Uh, and so we're gonna talk about how we keep our connections, uh, specifically the connection that goes into the bottom of the antenna, nice and dry. So stick around. First things first, uh, I did get my delivery. I've got approximately 40 feet here of MPD 400. It's the uh, MPD Digital's brand. Exactly the same specs as the LMR 400, but uh, you know the price point's a little bit better. So uh, again, if you wanna pick up any of the uh, MPD 400 or any of the LMR 240, uh, LMR 400, any of the products at MPD Digital, make sure you use the uh, discount code uh, H Street, which you can find um, also um, in heliumstreet.com. So let's get started. So this was a delivery for an application that we're going to be putting on a uh, a tall pole. So this is approximately 40 feet. This is a little little bit taller than some of our other installations where we use the 30 foot flagpole. We've got a little bit more height on this application. But basically, what we have here is we have uh, two different connections going from our our N type. Uh, female connection into the bottom of our antenna, which is the N-type male connection. So we'll go ahead and we'll show you that. This is a 5.8 dBi antenna that we have from Rack Wireless. And Rack Wireless is a, is a great supplier for these antennas. Um, as you can see, this specific and our, most of the uh, connections on the bottom of these specific antennas, you'll see right here, uh, this is the N-type male connection. And so it's intended to then just go ahead and attach right here. So what we're going to do is let's get a little bit more length here. This is the flexibility of the MPD 400, which is pretty good. Uh, compared to the uh, the LMR, uh, the regular stuff is a little bit more, um, a little bit harder to bend. The reason why we're doing this here is because I wanna I wanna get this as far along as I can um, in terms of the you know all the work that I can do on the bench versus getting out into the field and trying to do the installation. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my antenna connection together here, and so it just simply screws on. Uh, now, these are intended to be hand tight, very hand tight, <laughs> just because I don't want anything to happen out in the field. And so I really kind of crank these down hard with my hands. So what we use for our waterproofing is that we use coax seal. And again, links down, down in the description section as well as uh, links at heliumstreet.com. And then we use the um, Scotch brand Super 33 uh, tape, which is a, uh, a UV resistant electrical tape. It's made for this application. Um, now the, the one thing that is interesting about this coax seal, this coax seal is is not UV resistant and that is the reason why we come back over the top of it with the uh, Scotch brand uh, uh, Super 33 electrical tape. Okay that's the whole purpose for it. And so you know you you, you want to make sure that you're using the right stuff here because once you get this antenna up in the air you, you know you're not going to want to have to be bringing it down because you've got connection problems this is one of those connections that you got to be super super careful to make sure that you got it right um and and so let's talk about uh, orientation here of uh, all the equipment and then where we start our, our tape and where we stop our tape so if you think about siding on a house Basically, a siding on a house is staggered, right? The rain comes down, and it goes over one ledge, and then it hits another one, and then it goes over another edge. And it's very specifically designed so that, um, so that if, you know, if you were to put siding upside down, water would come down the side of your house, and it would go in back behind the siding uh, that was directly below. And so if you think about that from a tape perspective, we want to do the same thing, is that we want to overlap our tape in a way that um, always sheds water over the top. So if you just kind of think about it from that perspective, um, we're always going to start both our, um, our coax seal as well as our electrical tape from the bottom and working our way up. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today is that we're going to show you. Now, I'm not going to um, 
I'm not going to measure this. I'm going to go ahead and take a piece off. That's the nice part about this uh, coax seal is that you can join additional pieces of it over the top um, of other pieces without any concern. So, so what we'll do here is, and I'm going to take my gloves off here because it's a little bit hard to handle with gloves. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to start on the bottom and we're going to start below the um, the MPD uh, digital sleeve. If there's a plastic sleeve over this, you want to start below that because you don't want to let any opportunity for water to get up underneath it. Okay, and so this is the orientation. Okay, this is the orientation. And... Um, and so we're going to start from our bot the bottom and work our way up. So here we go. So we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to make sure that we're below this plastic sleeve and we're going to go ahead and work our way up and we're overlapping the next piece always by about half. Okay? We're going to go halfway up the next piece all the way. Okay, you can see I'm still going up. And then I'm getting to the connection. Right here is where that piece is going to stop. And so I'm going to pull off another piece. Again, it doesn't have to be continuous. It's probably better if it is, but it's not. There certainly is any kind of a showstopper here if it isn't. And this kind of tape is designed just to pull apart. Okay, you don't have to worry about cutting it. You don't have to use special scissors. And we're just going to overlap the ending of that piece. And then we're going to keep on going. Now you can buy this coax seal in larger widths, widths. Uh, but the reason why I like to use the smaller width is because it allows me to get into these little crevices uh, in between the connections a little bit better. Again, overlapping, and you can see how I've overlapped in a way that then water would shed over the top of each one of those ridges, just like the siding of your house. So there you go. You keep on going through over the connection, and then you want to go a little bit further. Okay, I'm going to need a third piece. And we're just going to go up over that base of this antenna by, I don't know, maybe like two or three millimeters, maybe a little bit more, just enough to give it a little bit of coverage, okay? So there we go. So now the connection is good. And now what we do is we go ahead and press it in. It's pretty sticky, but it, it you know, I think that you don't want to use gloves, certainly when you're doing this application. And I'm kind of just working it working it together, making sure that the pieces of tape really seat onto each other. In warm weather, this is a lot more uh, a lot more sticky uh, during a warm climate. Right now it's it's cold season where 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 we live. Um, and it's uh, it's not as sticky as it would normally be if you're out on a hot summer day. Okay? So there. So now it's all pressed into place. I've got it pushed into all the little crevices in between the connections. Now the next step is to take that uh, Scotch brand uh, Super 33. And we're going to do it in the same way. And that is that we're going to work from the bottom and we're going to work our way up. Okay. Now this is a situation where I'm going to use a continuous piece of tape. And so I'm just going to go just below the coax seal. And I'll get this up in the air here so that I can get underneath it. Okay, and so I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna overlap by about half all the way. And the whole reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna get that UV resistance. Okay, so that the, the, the su natural sunlight does not break down my coax seal. So I'm continuing to roll this up and then giving it a slight pull so that I stretch it. Okay, just a slight pull. You don't want to stretch it too hard. Okay, and I'm still working my way up, working my way up. And then I'm going to make sure that I go over the edge of the coax seal. And then I want to pull it down just a couple of turns below, and then I'm going to stop, okay? So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the tape out, and then using a utility knife or some scissors is that I'm going to cut it. I'm not going to pull it apart. We don't want to pull it apart because then that's just going to turn into a little flag. 
uh, it's not going to stick because this stuff isn't made to pull apart. It's made to be cut. So I'm going to cut it off straight. Okay, and I'm just going to terminate it right there. So there's my connection. And I go around and make sure that all my little edges are nicely pressed down. And you'll see that it's completely water tight now. If you uh, got something out of this really basic tutorial on how to waterproof your connections, uh, please leave us a like and, and also make sure that you subscribe to the channel because we're going to keep um, feeding the audience with these little helpful uh, hints and little tricks of the trade, you know, for helium deployment. There's a lot of th little things like this that you need to kind of get, get familiar with. So again, hey, thanks so much for being here and we'll see you in the next one.